Uh, this is Kayla Waycaster again, continuing the Animal Diversity Biology Project. And we were examining the phylogenetic tree. We had uh, previously looked at phylum periphera, cnidaria, and platyhelminthes, which is sponges, jellyfish, and hydra, and sea, an sea anemones, and uh, flatworms. Uh, after flatworms, which had no body cavity, we returned to the question, does it have a body cavity? And if the answer is yes, we come to another question. What is the type of body cavity it has? If it is a pseudocoelomate, which means it has a fake body cavity, so it's not a real one, it's just um, between two germ layers and it's filled with liquid, but it does not have, it's not connected to the mesoderm, it's just kind of there. If it is a pseudocoelomate, we come to two different phylums, rotiferers and nemotata. But today we are just going to be looking at the phylum nemotata. Nemotata is um, another type of worm. Uh, they have bilateral symmetry. They are also free-moving or parasitic, like the flatworms. Uh, they reproduce sexually. They breathe through the skin. Um, they are also carnivorous, so they eat meat or they live off the nutrients that uh, come from the inside of their host. They are eumetazoan, meaning they have a digestive tract. They are triploblastic, so they possess all three uh, germ layers. They, are, they have a pseudocoelomate, which is a fake body cavity, and they are protosome. And if you remember in the last video we talked about a protosome is, uh, during gastrulation, the hole created to start the digestive system is the mouth whereas deuterosomes is the anus. Um, they are unsegmented and they uh, use diffusion in order to get nutrients to their body as a form of circulation. This is the first phylum that we have come across that, you, that has a complete digestive system and that is what like we have. We have, a, we have a mouth and then we have another end and it just goes straight through. There's two openings that they use instead of just one like all the previous phylums. Uh, this is the most common multicellular organism on earth. It has the most um, they also have ganglia, like talked about in the flatworm. Some of them are hermaphroditic, and what that means is that they possess both sexes inside one. Um, different types are heartworms, which uh, are most common in dogs. And how a dog can get heartworms is actually not coming in contact with another dog that has heartworms. It is by being bitten by a mosquito that has previously bitten a dog and it takes uh, the heartworms with it by drinking the blood and uh, whenever it bites it then it infects another dog. Um, hookworms, which is the picture right here, it's uh, the little teeth right there are used to hook onto um, uh, linings of intestines or things of that nature. Another example uh, is pinworms. Pinworms used to be really common in the south because everyone would run around barefoot and uh, the pinworms would burrow through your skin and get into your bloodstream. Uh, and then another example is elephantiasis. In elephantiasis, this is a picture right here. You can see his foot is really swollen, and the reason it's called elephantiasis is because uh, sometimes it swells so bad that your toes disappear and you look like an elephant. Um, what this parasite does is it gets into your bloodstream and it prevents the uh, liquids that have leaked out of your bloodstream to get back into your bloodstream, causing your foot to, to swell or other parts of your body. Uh, then we return to the question, what is the type of body cavity? If the answer is coelomate, which means it has a true body cavity, then we have to face the question, what is the fate of the blastopore? And if you remember in the first video, we kind of talked about it a little bit. Um, a blastopore is just a hollow ball of cells. It is the beginning of the creation of an organism or an animal. <coughs> and from the blastopore, you enter gastrulation. And gastrulation decides whether it is a protosome or deuterosome. Protosome meaning mouth first, which means the mouth is formed first deuterostome meaning that the mouth is formed second. And if the animal is a protosome, we come to three different uh, phylums, mollusca, annelidia, and anthropoda. First we'll look at mollusca, and mollusca has bilateral symmetry, and the way they move is they have some kind of foot that allows them to move, which is pretty much like a muscle that just kind of propels them along. 
Um, they reproduce sexually. The, they can breathe through gills or by lung, depending on the type of animal. So if it were like a slug or a snail, for example, then those have lungs that they can use. Uh, how and what do they eat? They are scavengers. And, uh, for example, snails uh, eat leaves and things that they can come upon. Uh, they are eumetazoan. They are also triploblastic. They possess all three germ layers. Uh, they have a coelom, a true body cavity, which is uh, between two layers, um, between two germ layers, and it does have mesoderm lining connected to it. They have an open circulatory system. This is the first time that we've come across this. And what an open circulatory system is, is um, they, the organism has a heart and blood vessels, but the blood vessels just kind of lead to nowhere. And they just open up. They're not really connected to anything, and they don't reconnect to the heart. They don't circle back around. And whenever the heart pumps, it pushes blood out of those vessels and just kind of washes over the organs, giving them kind of a blood bath. And then whenever the heart uh, contracts, then it pulls the blood back in, and the cycle repeats. Um, some of them have a thing called a radula, which is like what a snail has, and it's kind of like little teeth on their tongue, and that's it, it allows them to scrape things off or scrape things up, and it allows them to eat. Um, they possess two metaphrenia, which is kind of like our liver. Uh, three different types. There are three different uh, subphylums. There is gastropoda, which means stomach foot, and that is like a snail or a slug, things of that nature, things that crawl on their belly because their foot, the thing that they use to move, is on their stomach and it pushes them along. Uh, the other is bivalvia, which means two valves, like a clam, because a clam has two different sides and they can open up on a hinge. And the other is cephalopoda. Cephalopoda is the most advanced type of mollusca, and that includes octopus and squid, things like that. They have highly developed sensory org organs, such as sight, and they are extremely intelligent. Then we return to different types of protostomes, and the next one we'll look at is Annelidia. The phylum Annelidia uh, has bilateral symmetry. They are also parasitic or free-moving. They reproduce sexually, and they can breathe through their body surface or through gills, depending, again, depending on what type of uh, animal it is. How and what do they eat? Um, some of them, like a leech, eats uh, blood or things of that nature, and then some of them um, eat minerals from the earth and things that have decomposed. Um, they are eumetazoan, meaning they have a digestive system. Uh, they are triploblastic. They have a true coelom, and they are protostome. They are segmented. This is the first that we've come across that has been segmented, which means they have two, two parts of their body, pretty much, and it allows them to move a lot easier and a lot more fluently. Um, they have a closed circulatory system, and a closed circulatory system is like what we have. Uh, we have blood vessels that run all the way through our body, and then eventually loop back to the heart so that we just use the same blood over and over again and it gets put back to our heart through blood vessels, unlike the open circulatory system like snails have. Uh, they have a complete digestive system, which means they have two openings and food travels from the, their mouth to the end. Uh, they have uh, hairs made out of chitae, which is made out of chitin, similar to things in things like lettuce, things like that. Uh, it's a it's something that we cannot digest. Um, they have dorsal and ventral blood vessels, which means that they have blood vessels running down their back and also blood vessels running down their stomach. There are three different types, oligoche oligocheta, polycheta, and hirundia, and uh, earthworms, leeches, and this little guy are all included in these three types. And then we return to different types of protostome, and the last one we will look at is Anthropoda. Phylum anthro Arthropoda uh, has bilateral symmetry, and it has jointed appendages, and that's how it moves, which is uh, legs, things like that, and that's actually what Arthropoda means. Arthro meaning joints, poda meaning appendage. Um, they breathe through lungs or spiracles. Spiracles are uh, holes 
in the sides of some insects like grasshoppers or locusts and they breathe through the holes in their side. They reproduce sexually and they are also scavengers which means they eat things that they can come across. Um, they are eumetazoan, triploblastic, they have a true coelom, they are protostome and they are also segmented. Uh, they have an open circulatory system, much like phyla mollusca, and they have a complete digestive system. Um, this has the greatest variety of all the species in every phylum because it includes arachnids, mites, ticks, insects, all kinds of insects, uh, crustacea, chiplopoda, and diplopoda, which is centipedes and millipedes. Um, they are made of chitin for an exoskeleton. And there are a couple of advantages and disadvantages to an exoskeleton. One advantage of an exoskeleton is that it provides a type of protection, so they, they have a much better protection from predators and things of that nature. But it also has a lot of disadvantages. And some of the disadvantages are that the, uh, the shell that they carry on them is it's extremely heavy and that keeps them from get from either getting too big or it prevents them from being active they can either be extremely active or they can be large but they cannot be both because the larger they are uh, the heavier their shell is there are two subphylum in phylum arthropoda mandibulata which have jaws and chilidorata which have pincers like the spider the pincers move from side to side in order to eat um, we already mentioned some of the types, and chiplopoda and diplopoda uh, sound similar, but chilo, meaning it's a word for one, which means one leg per body segment, per one, yeah, one leg per body segment, and diplopoda means two legs per body segment, which is why millipedes seem to have so many more legs than centipedes do. And then we return to the question, what is the fate of the blastopore? If the answer is deuterostome, then we come to two phylum. Chordates, which is what we are. Uh, we have a, a cord, a spine, running from our brain down our backs. And then there's this phylum over here, Echinodermata, which is what we're going to be looking at today. Uh, Echinodermata. Echinodermata has radial symmetry, but their larva has bilateral symmetry, so they kind of go through a shift. Um, and then as adults, they possess this radial symmetry. Type of motility, they have uh, little suckers that can move like feet, and it allows them to grab hold of things like rocks and things of that nature. Um, their spines are specialized as gills, and as the water passes over these gills, it'll, uh, it pulls out the nutrients it needs in order to breathe. They reproduce sexually, they are scavengers, and sometimes their stomach comes out of their body in order to eat. Uh, they are eumetazoan, triploblastic, they, have a they are coelomate, which means they have a true body cavity, and they are deuterostome, which means the mouth is formed second during the gastrulation period. Uh, they are segmented, they have a closed circulatory system, much like we do, and they have complete digestion, which means they have a mouth and then another end and the food travels straight through. They have gill slits along their side and uh, like, like I mentioned earlier the water passes over these gill slits in order for them to breathe. They have a dorsal nerve cord and a dorsal nerve cord is a nerve cord that runs down the back. It's kind of like our spine. And one really interesting and unique thing about Echinodermata is that they can repossess they can regenerate lost body parts. So for example, if you cut off an arm of a starfish, eventually it would be able to get that back. Uh, different types of echinodermata, which is sea urchins, which are right over here, uh, starfish, and sand dollars. And this picture of a sand dollar, you may not recognize it because usually pictures of sand dollars that we see are dead and they look like this, but whenever they are alive, they are colorful. Uh, only whenever they die they lose that color. And that is the end of our phylogenetic tree. So we have completed all different categories and thank you for watching.